Fish on Fridays. I'm Al McCauley. And if you've watched past episodes of our series, you know that we've done episodes on these things we call sacramentals, uh, votive candles. We've done them on, believe it or not, on sacred salt, um, sacramental holy cards, icons. Sacramentals are those things collectively that predispose us to God's grace. They kind of soften us up to, to be in better relationship with Christ through the sacraments. So sacramentals in and of themselves aren't sacraments, and nor do they have power in and of themselves. I, I've talked before about wearing a medal of St. Therese of Lisieux, my favorite saint, on my neck every day. That's a sacramental. It has no real power in and of itself, but it is something that reminds me of her, uh, her lesson, her life, and how to maybe emulate that better. Today, I want to talk to you about another sacramental that is in all of our churches. Every Catholic church has them, and you may not even be aware of it. Um, I'm talking about the holy oils. There are three cruets or vials, little glass jars of oil in every Catholic church, and they're nestled in this little structure, a little niche or a little cupboard called the ambry. In fact, that's what ambry means. It's a Latin word that means cupboard, and it's where these oils are stored. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. The oils that are used throughout the, the liturgical life of the church are really nothing more than olive oil. Um, and you think about olive oil, and it's, it's everywhere in the, in the Bible. In the New Testament, the story I'm thinking about immediate, immediately is the Good Samaritan story. We hear about the, the Samaritan who finds the person who fell in with robbers, and he's, he's wounded. And so what does he do? He pour, pours oils on his wounds. And so it's important for us to understand that Olive oil in particular was an absolute staple in the first century time, in the biblical times, in Jesus's time. Um, where does he go to pray the night before he dies is Gethsemane, the, the garden of olives. And in fact, Gethsemane means, the word means olive press. You know, so it's so so part of their struck their 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 fabric of their lives that um, it's not unusual that olive oil or oil in general was used as as, a, as an analogy, as a metaphor for something, and that's still true of us as Catholics, Catholic Christians. We use this sacramental of oils for different sacraments, and so I want to talk about them a little bit. But just again, over and above all, think about oil in this regard. Today. What does it do for us? It, it protects us, it heals us, it softens us up. That's what oil does. Um, again, in biblical times, it was meant to be like a blessing. In the Bible, we read about how it's a symbol of abundance and a joy. That's when oil was used. But um, these are the two analogies I would use for our own time, going back to the, the protecting, the healing, and the softening up. Think about a time you've ever had, maybe you've had a, a new baseball glove. And it's very stiff and it's hard to break in. Because it's leather, it's very stiff. And so what we did as kids is we would put oil, Vaseline or some kind of oil in it, and we would really rub that in and, and let it soak in so that it would be a little bit more supple and form easier. And then we put a ball inside and put rubber bands around it or put it under a mattress so it would be form into the, the, the um, it would be more easy, easily pliable when you're on the baseball field. But that oil soaks in. That's very important because that's what this sacramental does. It soaks into us, right? But but it's, it's that softening up. It makes us ready to receive the grace that God gives us through these sacraments. Here's another analogy I would use. Hot summer day, you're going to go outside. You don't want to get sunburned. So what do you put on? You put on oil, some kind of protection so you don't get burned. Let's say you stay out too long and that oil kind of wears off. You come in and you're burned. What do you put on to heal? You put on oil, and like from aloe, an aloe plant. So oil has the potential not just to protect, but also to heal. And as I said earlier, to soften us up. Now think about that. Anytime the oils are used in a sacrament, that's what they're doing. They're protecting us. They're healing us. They're softening us up, getting us ready for Christ. And so these oils that every Catholic church has are given to the church in a very special mass. And it happens usually, not usually, it happens during Holy Week, almost always Tuesday of Holy Week. Um, so the, the week we celebrate Jesus' last week on earth. And it's come something called the Chrism Mass. And the bishop of your diocese is going to bless these oils and then they're distributed to every parish in the diocese to be used for the following year. And there's three types of oils. And so I want to just briefly mention them. And usually on the cruets or on the glass bottles that they're in, they have little letters. And so the first one I'll talk to you about is called OC or oil of catechumens. And this is used to give strength and healing to anybody who is going to be baptized in the church. You see this a lot with adults who are baptized as well. The second one says it has an OI by it, the oil of infirmed. Now this is used, this oil is used for anointing of the sick. 
It's um, to remind us that Jesus, Jesus's healing is brought to the sick, to anybody who's suffering mentally, physically, whatever. It's meant for anybody who is uh, getting ready for surgery. Uh, so the healing that it does it, and, and it's important to understand that this is softening us up to whatever God, God's grace is. It's not a magical talisman that's going to instantly make you um, healthy. It's something that prepares us for God's grace, whatever that might mean. The third bottle, if you will, or cruet, is has an SC on it, sacred chrism. And this is a little bit different than the other two. It's still olive oil, but they've added balsam to it. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Sacred chrism is used at baptisms. It's used at confirmation and holy orders for priests who are being um, ordained. It includes balsam because it's a very aromatic smell. It's something that kind of wafts up and fills the, the space. And it's supposed to remind us that, that our faith is not just something we, we think. It's something that we tangibly feel with the oil. We can smell it. All of our senses are engaged with this. And it's supposed to invoke that idea of the, the, how, how deeply penetrating God's grace is into our lives. Um, it, you think about, St. Paul wrote about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. He refers to something called the aroma of holiness, the smell of holiness. And I, when, I would, when I work with people in the um, RCIA program to, to bring them into the church, adults into the Catholic church, I always have them smell that long before they're confirmed. And I say, you know, get used to that. And, you know, it's a real kind of a neat thing. They really like the smell of it, as do I. But um, what's neat is at the mass, the, the, the chrism mass every year, the bishop will bless the oils, but the chrism is a little different. He'll not just bless it, but he will put his face over and breathe into it. And he does that because it's to remind us about the breath of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that come, came uh, on the, the apostles at that first Pentecost, that they're breathing new life. Jesus breathes on his apostles. And the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit is breathed into us. And so that's why the bishop does that, to remind us of that fact. So... Anyway, sacramentals of holy oils. There's a crash course for you. I hope this has been interesting. No matter where you go to worship, if you go into a Catholic church, you should look around for that ambry. See if you can find it. And and uh, if you can't, ask somebody. Say, hey, where's your ambry? I'd like to look at it. Just to maybe even smell the chrism. If it's been a while since you've been confirmed, it'd be a, maybe take you back a little bit and remind you of the Holy Spirit in your life. So again, thanks for watching. We, uh, we hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love it if you'd follow us on Facebook. But either way, please keep tuning in every Friday for Fish on Fridays. Until next time, please be good to each other and God bless.